Hello all, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we will be talking about initial access and subsequently demonstrate how we can prepare and pack a payload file to obtain initial access via phishing with complete Windows Defender Bypass. This will be done via Covenant C2. This will be a long video demonstrating step by step and the thought process in developing the undetected payload package file. Initial access is a well documented attack technique. As shown over here on the Mitel attack webpage, there is a list of commonly used attack tactics and techniques to obtain initial access. Ultimately, the goal of initial access is to gain a foothold onto your target environment. The two main ways for initial access would be to exploit an external facing asset such as a web application or via phishing. Phishing is what we will be interested here. Under phishing, we can further break it down into two main objectives. One is to gain access onto your victim's computer via a malicious payload and second is to harvest credentials, usually via cloning of a website. Feel free to give all of the techniques listed here a read if you are interested. It is pretty intensively documented. When we talk about compromising an external facing asset for initial access, one of the most important factor would be the ability to perform external recon with the goal of discovering as many external assets belonging to your target as possible. This is also known as external attack surface mapping and discovery. The most popular tool available would be a mess by OWAPS. A mess is able to make use of several third-party service providers shown over here to perform asset discovery. It is important to note that if you want to have fruitful results from a mess, you will need to sign up for free API keys from these third-party service providers and configure it, else the results will be significantly reduced. Another popular tool would be Shodan. Shodan basically performs a port scan and vulnerability assessment VA, on the whole internet. You can quickly search for information such as software applications exposed, open ports, and basically other fingerprintable information from it instantly. Since you are just searching for the results of the port scan instead of actually performing the port scan itself. I love exploring on Shodan during my free time and you will be surprised at some of the interesting stuff I have found. Nuclei is another tool that is widely used. It is able to perform VA to identify possibility of compromising an external asset by making use of its many templates available. It is developed in such a way that anyone can quickly spin up a custom template to identify a certain vulnerability and use it to scan across a list of assets. Nuclei is usually the default go-to tool after discovering a wide list of external assets as Nuclei will be able to quickly identify any interesting targets to dive deeper into. EAP Hammer is another awesome tool that you should get familiarized with. It is able to perform several wireless attacks against enterprise wireless networks, such as the Evil Twin attack. Of course, this requires you to be physically near your target location. The high-level idea of it is to overpower your target environment wireless signal and clone your target wireless environment in hopes that your target will connect to your evil wireless access point instead, providing you with credentials. Moving on to the phishing-related attacks. Evil GeneX is an awesome reverse proxy attack framework that allows harvesting of credentials and session tokens. Since you are able to obtain the session token of your victim after your victim completes any 2FA or MFA authentication, it essentially bypasses any form of 2FA and MFA authentication. Personally, I have played around with Evil GeneX 2 in the past and it is pretty awesome. This is very different from the old school phishing of cloning a web page and it is definitely worth looking into. Since we will be demonstrating serving of a payload package file via phishing, it is important to note that having a C2 redirector is very important as it will help to increase the difficulty in identifying your C2 server. For more information, check out the video in my channel on C2 redirector with Apache mod rewrite. The link to the video will be in the video's description. Alright, that is all to the high level introduction on initial access. Without further ado, let's get started with the practical hands-on demo on how you can prepare a payload file to compromise your victim and obtain initial access. The most important thing you need is obviously a payload file that will connect back to your C2 and the payload has to be undetected. At the minimum, your payload should be able to bypass the latest Windows Defender. We will be making use of a template C++ code that has already been demonstrated previously in another video. Feel free to check out the video in greater details. The link to the video will be in this video's description. Let's copy and paste the template source code used. We will also need the Python script that performs the AES encryption on our Covenant C2 implant shellcode file.
Alright, now we will need our Covenant C2 implant shellcode file. Let's hop over to our Covenant C2 and generate the shellcode file. We will need to perform the AES encryption with the Python script on the .bin file generated. Let's copy and paste the output, which is the AES encrypted shellcode and also the AES key into the C++ template source code file. If you are lost here, I highly recommend to watch the previous videos first on the setup. All of the necessary links to the previous videos will be provided in this video's description. Once that is done, let's compile the binary. Let's transfer the exe file over to our Windows and test it out first. As shown in the screen, Windows Defender is fully updated and turned on. Oh no, it is being detected as expected since the previous video already went public and Microsoft is quick to implement detection on it. Let's try to change the source code to bypass Windows Defender. Alright, very minor changes done. Let's see if this works. Let's transfer over the compiled hello world.exe file again to our Windows. Awesome, our payload is able to land on this without any detection. Let's try to execute it. This will trigger a cloud scan since every feature of Windows Defender is turned on. Nice, it seems that it went through. We are able to obtain a callback on our Covenant C2, bypassing Windows Defender. That is easy. Let's try to execute some commands on our C2 to see if it works. Let's trigger a manual Windows Defender scan to see if it is able to detect the payload. If we switch over to our Windows machine now, it seems that Windows Defender is able to detect the payload. Once a payload is being detected, it is as good as gone. Let's modify the source code again and give it another shot. Let's maybe try to change the decrypt AES function to remove one argument and instead define it within the function itself. Let's remove the key length argument and define the key length value in the function. This should hopefully work. Let's recompile it to Hello World 2 and give it a shot. Whoa, it is immediately detected. Oh, we forgot to change the AES encrypted shellcode. Since it was previously detected, the AES encrypted shellcode has been blacklisted. Let's regenerate the AES encrypted shellcode and key. Again, we will need to copy and paste the output from the script into the source code file. Let's recompile it and give it a shot. This is weird, it didn't work. There is no detection but the payload doesn't work. I think that changing of the AES decrypt function in the C++ source code broke it. Let's change it back. Let's give it another try. Awesome, our payload works now. We are able to get a callback again on our Covenant C2 without any detection from Windows Defender. Let's try to execute some commands. We should also trigger a Windows Defender scan manually as well, just to be sure. Alright, this looks good. Now let's create a launcher file that will fetch and execute our undetected payload file. At this step, 
we can actually just send the EXE payload file to our victim. But it is very suspicious sending an EXE file over. So let's create a launcher shortcut LNK file that will disguise as a text file. Right click and create a shortcut. Enter the full path of CMD and name it readme.txt. Right click on the properties and change the icon to match notepad.exe. Nice, this looks good. Now we can use PowerShell wget, which is basically a wrapper around invoke web requests to download our payload exe file remotely that is hosted on our Kali web server. Let's rename our payload helloworld.exe to something shorter like a single letter T instead. Output the downloaded file onto the temp directory of the victim. It is important to use environment variables here such as the percentage TMP percentage as this will be automatically expanded into the temp directory full path of the victim. This means that you do not need to know the victim's username in order to drop it onto the victim's temp directory. You can run the set command set to check out the environment variables available to use. Alright, that is it. We now have a text file looking LNK shortcut launcher file. This looks more legitimate and your victim will be more likely to click on it instead of the exe file. Let's give it a shot. Awesome, it worked out well. As shown in the screen, after clicking on the readme.txt file, our payload t.exe is downloaded onto the victim's temp directory in the background. That is pretty cool. Let's improvise even further. EXE payload files are shit, so let's not use that. Let's compile a .dll payload file instead. We can run the .dll payload file with a legitimate Windows binary such as rundll32. It will be harder for your victim to identify it in Task Manager as well as compared to running an .exe file. Let's hop over to the channel's GitHub repo and use the .dll template source code file which was already demonstrated in the previous video. Let's copy and paste the necessary code from it so that our payload can be compiled into a DLL file instead. This should do it. Let's give it a try by compiling it. Awesome, we have our DLL payload file now. Let's transfer it over to our Windows machine and see if it works. Hmm, weird. MSI exec should be able to execute it since we have the exported function named DLL register server. This is really weird. Let's just use run DLL32 instead and specify the exported name. Okay, it works now. We are able to get a callback on our Covenant C2 and it was able to bypass Windows Defender completely. Sweet. As shown in the task manager, our payload is living in the run dll32.exe process. Let's end the process and it should terminate our Covenant C2 connection. Let's modify our LNK text file to download and execute the dll payload file as well. Alright, this should download our dll payload file and output it onto the temp directory. Awesome. Now let's add in the commands to execute it. Whoa, what the hell? It is being detected suddenly. This is so weird. Let's give it another try. We will need to regenerate the AES encrypted shellcode and key since it has been detected. Copy and paste the AES shellcode and key into the source code file. Let's change the exported function name to something random like go22 instead. Alright, let's give it another shot. I suspect that it is being detected not because of the payload file itself, but the way the shortcut file is downloading a file and executing the file altogether, especially a compiled binary such as DLL. It is a very suspicious behavior. 
as expected, it is being detected again. Let's make some minor changes like changing the move memory function again and regenerate the AES encrypted shellcode and key to get another fresh DLL payload. Now let's recompile it. Let's try to transfer the file with SCP and execute it manually to see if it works. As shown in the screen, the payload works and it is not being detected. However, if we were to use the shortcut text file to perform the download and execution, it will be detected. This is what I meant by the payload file itself is okay, but the suspicious behavior of the shortcut text file is triggering Windows Defender. What we can do here instead is to use the shortcut file to download a batch file and execute it instead of a DLL payload file. By executing a batch file instead of a compiled binary file such as DLL, hopefully this will bypass the detection from Windows Defender. Let's create the batch file on our Kali first. Let's change the shortcut text file command to download and execute the batch file. Hmm, weird. It didn't execute. The download and execution of the batch file was a success since subsequently the DLL file has been downloaded by the batch file but it didn't execute. The good thing here is that there is no longer any Windows Defender detection. Let's investigate why it didn't execute. Oh, I think it's because of the extra cmd.exe over here. We shouldn't need it since the batch file will be executed by cmd already. Let's give it another try. Let's clean up the files and execute the shortcut text file again. Awesome, it worked now. We are able to get a Covenant C2 callback by passing Windows Defender using a shortcut LNK file disguised as a text file. Even if we were to close this readme.txt command prompt, our callback doesn't die off because it is running in the run DLL32 process. Now, let's improvise our payload file to pack it nicely into a package that can be delivered to our victim. Let's search for a sample PDF file to download. This looks good. Now, let's password protect the PDF file. We can password protect the PDF file online, so it's pretty convenient. The idea here is to have a password protected PDF file and the text file sent to your victim. If your victim tries to open up the password protected PDF file, it will not be possible. The next logical action your victim will do is to double click on the shortcut text file instead to get a password for the PDF. This will result in the download of the batch and payload file and compromise his own Windows computer giving you a callback on your Covenant C2. Now that we have a nice zip file to send to our victim, let's transfer the zip file onto our Kali machine first and download it to our Windows machine over a web server. Once the victim has downloaded the zip file, he will attempt to extract the zip file. The zip package will contain two files, a readme.txt file and a password protected PDF file. The victim tries to open up the PDF file and it is password protected. The victim will then try to open up the text file in hopes of getting the password. This will then trigger the attack chain and compromise the victim's Windows computer, giving you a callback on your Covenant C2 server. Awesome, beautifully executed. It should be noted that this video only focuses on the payload file development and packaging. In reality, this is definitely going to be flagged by email security solutions like Azure Office ATP. You will need something like Apache Mod Rewrite and Blacklist the Azure Cloud IP addresses and other security vendor IP addresses to prevent their sandbox from fetching and detonating your payload. There are also interesting tools such as this Pack My Payload repo, which I personally haven't explored it should be worth taking a look at. Alright all, I hope you all have found this video to be helpful. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye!